Remember a drone called Lily Next Generation? Well, it was actually manufactured by a company called Hi Great, and they've just released a brand new drone, and we are the very first to review it. This is Mark. So into us direct from High Great, who are the manufacturer behind this drone, is their brand new product called Mark. Now it's available in three different colors, red, black, and white. Very nicely presented in its little display box here. Let's take a closer look inside. So as mentioned, this is manufactured by the same company that manufactured the Lily Next Gen drone for Motor Group. But now they're starting to try to enter the consumer market directly. Now interestingly, they have decided to actually market this drone via a crowdfund campaign on Kickstarter. It's currently been funded fully and the drone is available to buy as well separately but essentially it retails for about $239 which is about £200. That's obviously incredibly cheap and it's got some pretty good specifications as well. So it's packaged very neatly in here. You get a nice little thank you card, which is an introduction to high grade. And then there is the little drone. Now this is pretty small and portable and it weighs virtually nothing. And it is worth obviously pointing out that it's a foldable drone. It kind of reminds me of Dobby in terms of its form factor and size. But anyway, we'll have a closer look at that in a minute. We'll just quickly see what else is in the box. So lifting the lid up here, we've got a little accessory box. And inside that, we've got some spare props here. We've got a little Allen key, which is probably for replacing those props. So a little instruction manual. There it is. So a charging power adapter with a UK plug on there as well. Well done, high great. And finally, then we've got the battery. Uh, now I've only got one single battery here. Unfortunately, uh, there's also the charging module for it as well. So the battery for this drone is a 1500 2S pack. And apparently that gives 18 minutes of flight time. So that's really impressive on paper but obviously it'll be down to the flight test to see if that's a realistic figure. So anyway they're the accessories that you get with the drone. Now let's take a closer look at Mark. So there are a few interesting things worth reading on this welcome card. First of all the fact that it says do not fly it in the dark and that most likely is because this new system VIO positioning system is not able to see anything in the dark so it's got no stabilization. That is a bit of a shame, but the other point it makes is that you don't need to calibrate this. So no compass calibration, no waiting for GPS satellites to acquire. You put it on a flat surface, turn it on, and it simply calibrates itself and you can fly immediately. So here is Mark. Now this is very lightweight, very much plastic, uh, and very much portable. How it competes with the other drones on the market we will talk about in this review. But the first thing you might notice is this interesting arrangement up here. Now that's basically to store the props when the arms are folded. So as you unfold the arms, the props simply come out of this little holder. Interesting idea. It doesn't look so tidy, but at least it stops the props from catching. The overall alternative, of course, with most of these drone designs is that the props actually slide into the body of the drone itself. But I think the reason they might have done this is so that you can actually fit bigger props. If these props were designed to slide into the body, they would, of course, have to be lower down. And that means that the props wouldn't be able to be as long as they are. And you can see that compared to drones like Dobby, for example, and Spark, these are incredibly long props. So we'll unfold all of the arms and they are pretty short arms actually but because of the clearance we've got with the prop arrangement it means they can have some lovely big long blades. Overall nice little portable form factor and very lightweight and what's key about this for some of you in America perhaps with the FAA regulation and also in the UK where we may face similar weight limits next year the weight of this is only 200 grams so super lightweight. Now, one other interesting aspect to this drone is that there is no GPS in here. There is also no optical sensing underneath. Instead, it has a technology that they call VIO. I'm not quite sure what that stands for, but basically it's a part of the new Qualcomm Snapdragon platform. And it means that instead of all of those sensors, it has one camera here at the front at a 45 degree angle. So interestingly, this camera that's used for the kind of 3D visualization and mapping is suspended on 
almost like a kind of gimbal, but not a mechanical one. It's simply insulated from vibration by being soft mounted. So I guess that's so that this positioning camera has a nice steady view, but Odd that the actual main camera is not soft mounted at all and is completely stable fixed. It has EIS, which is good of course, but a bit of soft mounting probably wouldn't have gone amiss on the main camera as well. So apparently using this camera at the front means that the drone has a better perception of its surroundings and it's able to actually map out the area, the room, and outdoors and indoors, of course. However, I don't know how well this is gonna perform in the dark, because obviously in the dark it can't see. So maybe this is gonna be a daytime only drone. I will try and do a night test in this review. In front of that camera, you'll notice the main camera. This is a 4K camera, and it is capable of capturing 4K at 30 frames a second. It's also a 13 megapixel camera, so your stills are gonna be lovely high resolution. The camera does have a very slight downward tilt to it, as you can see, literally about five degrees. Unfortunately, however, it doesn't move, and that is a real shame, because obviously when you're trying to get that perfect shot, being able to adjust the angle of tilt of the camera means it's much easier. So that's a bit of a miss, but let's not forget the price bracket of this incredibly cheap drone. The other aspect to the camera here is that obviously there's no mechanical gimbal, it's purely EIS. Now, knowing the other high-grade drone, the Lily, EIS probably is only available when you're shooting at 1080p. If you shoot at 4K, you're likely to get 4K footage, but it won't be stabilized. You can, of course, stabilize it in post, and we will check this during the review to see if the 1080p is the only stabilized platform. There's no SD card slot on this drone as well. It's purely inbuilt storage. However, you do get 16 gigs of internal storage. That is a lot of space for storing photos and video. So there's gonna be no issues, I don't believe, there in terms of running out of room. On the back of the drone, there's a little flap here, a rubber insulated flap. If we just lift that up, Behind there is a tiny little micro USB port. That's probably for retrieving your photos. Uh, there's also a small reset button, I think, just to the right of that as well. So that may come in handy if you have any issues with updating firmware, etc. And then just below that flap is a power button. The motors on this little drone are brushless, which is good, and that means it's gonna have plenty of power. Also, nice and efficient, and I guess that's how they're able to state an 18-minute flight time, but as I say, the flight test is really where we'll get to see how accurate that statistic is. So on the underside, as you've probably noticed, there is the battery port, and the battery is quite nice itself as well. It's got quite a good design, and also nice to see is an inbuilt battery status checker. So if we press this little button on the battery, we get some lights illuminating. There are actually four there. Only one is illuminating, which shows us that it needs charging. So I love these inbuilt intelligent batteries where they show you a status without having to actually plug it into a charger to find out. I don't know how much these batteries are. There's no pricing available for these at the moment, but I only have one, unfortunately. The only downside with the battery and the charger, I would say, is that this charger, unfortunately, doesn't have USB. Now, when you're traveling, it's not nice to have to carry around a heavy brick like this. Instead, it would have been nice if the port on this charger was USB instead. That means you can plug it into anything to get it charged up. So, bit of a mistake there from high grades. And it is frustrating when you've got these brilliant manufacturers that produce these great products, but just don't have common sense in some simple areas. But anyway, let's see. We're gonna get this battery charged up and let's have a very quick look at the app. Now, unfortunately, due to pretty windy weather, I've not been able to film the outdoor flight test. However, today I filmed the indoor flight test and you will be shocked. So comment below with your thoughts so far, give this video a thumbs up and click subscribe so that you don't miss part two and part three. Thanks for watching.